and welcome back to Vlog Talk. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can teach your bird to leave your plate alone while you're eating. The only thing that is extremely important with teaching this behavior is your consistency. If you are not consistent with your requirements and you let the bird occasionally take crumbs off your plate or you don't pay attention and don't abide by the rules that you've set, it's going to be very difficult for your bird to actually understand what you want from them and this sort of mooching begging behavior is going to continue. So if you want to have a lot of success with this behavior, make sure that you are very consistent with what you want and you are very clear with what you want from your bird. Other than that, this behavior is not particularly complicated, it just takes a little bit of time and a lot of consistency. So let's hop on into it. The very first step here is going to be what I like to call value loading an area. So basically you're going to pick a spot that you really want the bird to stay while you're eating and just pack it with lots of value. Give them loads of treats for staying in the spot. Just constantly, as soon as they're done eating a treat, throw another one in their face. This way they're going to be very, very reinforced for wanting to stay in that area. They're going to understand that that one particular spot is full of value. There's a lot of reason for them to want to stay there. It's going to give you a really good base place to start. Because we're working with food and other very high value temptations, we want to make sure that we put as much value as possible while there's no temptations around so that way the birds are going to be more likely to want to stay where we want them to be. Once you feel pretty confident in that, you're going to start lessening it up a little bit. You're going to ask for a little bit of duration. So you're going to give them a treat, wait for their mouths to be empty, count to one or two, give them another treat. This way you're starting to teach them that just because treats aren't constantly flowing doesn't mean there isn't a reason to hang around there. And you're just going to slowly increase that time a little bit more each time to help encourage them to want to stay in the spot. This is again with absolutely no temptations around. You're just trying to encourage them staying in this area, having a good time in this area. You want this particular perch or this particular chair, wherever you feel your bird should be while you're eating. You want that spot to be extremely valuable to them. You want them to want to hang out there for them to understand that there is value in staying in this spot. So basically I'm just staring at a clock on the wall and watching it tick and every couple seconds I'm giving them a treat, then I'm adding another second on top of that, then I'll add two seconds on top of that, and I'm just slowly increasing how much time I ask for, remembering that you do not start the time until their beaks are empty. If their beaks are full, then they're constantly being reinforced for the time. You want their beaks to be empty so they're consciously having to make the decision to stay in that one spot. If their beaks are full, they're not going to want to leave anyways because they already have what they want in their mouths. So you need their beaks to be empty so that way they're consciously processing what's happening and they're actually doing what you want, which is standing there and waiting for the treat to arrive instead of just having their beaks full and then just waiting for their beak to be empty before they get a second one. You need that gap of time where they're not chewing on anything so that way they're actually doing the behavior that you want, which is staying on the perch and moving forwards. Once they're doing this pretty consistently and you can tell that they're just going to stand on the perch, they're not trying to go anywhere, they're just staying in this one area, then you are good to go to progress to the next step, which will be adding some temptations. Now we're not going to add anything too, too crazy off the hop. All I'm going to do is put a bowl of cereal near them. How close you put it is completely dependent on how much of a mooch your bird is. I'm able to put mine pretty close and not elicit much of a response from them, which is exactly what we want. We want them to notice the bowl, but we don't want them to react to it. We don't want them to suddenly be lunging towards it and be trying to fly at it. And if they do decide to fly at your bowl, just pick them up, put them back. You don't need to yell at them or punish them. Just reset them in the position that you want them, wait a second or two, and then treat them for being there. If the temptation is too much where the bird is constantly flying down to the bowl, move the bowl away a little bit further, add a little bit of space there, because if it's just too tempting and you're constantly having to correct the bird and put them back in a different position, then they're failing a lot more than they're succeeding and they're not going to want to engage in this activity. You always want the bird to be more successful than their failures. So we're doing the exact same process with this as we were before. We're just starting with very quick lots of treats with the presentation of the bowl. The only thing we're reinforcing is the fact that they're keeping both feet on the perch. Doesn't matter what else they're doing. And we're just going to slowly increase the duration that we're asking them to sit there, waiting for their beaks to be empty, counting a couple seconds, adding a couple more seconds, and increasing that length of time until we're at a pretty good consistent spot where the birds are staying they're noticing the bowl and they're not actively trying to go for it or they're not constantly flying down. They're just happy sitting on the perch with the bowl being around them. From there, we can move and make this a little bit more challenging by just playing with our food. So this is pretty simple. We're going to try and make this a little bit more tempting. So I'm gonna pick up the spoon, move the food around a little bit, and then immediately give them a treat. 
Now again, if you fiddle with the food and the bird immediately flies down to the bowl, just reset them, put them back on the perch, wait a couple seconds, and maybe even simplify it. If you're fiddling with the food and the bird is immediately flying for the bowl every time, it may be too tempting for them at this point, and you may either need to have the bowl further away when you first start fiddling with it, or you may just need to back up and repeat the previous step a couple more times with just the bowl being near them, because maybe they're just not fully understanding the concept at this point. But you should be able to work the bowl closer and closer and closer until you're able to have it right beside them. You can play around with the food and they're not going to move. Again, you're increasing the duration. You're not fiddling with the bowl for a full minute before giving them a treat right off the hop. You're just going to move it around a couple times, give them a treat, move it around a couple more times, and just increase how long you're playing with the food for before they earn the reward. Remembering that the only thing we're requiring is that their feet stay on the perch. From here, we're going to start to eat the food. This tends to be the most challenging part for a lot of birds because they want to eat what you eat, and if you're eating, obviously it's tasty and they would like it. So we're just going to eat very slowly. So I'm going to take a small spoonful, put it in my mouth, and immediately give them a reward. I'm not going to wait for myself to finish chewing. I might even still have the spoon in my mouth. It's as soon as I've picked up the food in the spoon, I am slamming food into their mouth. And this is because this can be so overly tempting that you want to reinforce the behavior as soon as it's happening. So if putting the whole spoon in your mouth is too tempting for them, try just picking up the spoon and then giving them a treat. Don't wait to pick up the spoon and then put it back down. Sometimes it's just too long. We want to set the birds up for success, so if you can find ways to make them more successful, make the steps a little bit smaller, a little bit simpler, absolutely go for it. You want the birds to succeed. You don't want to be constantly picking them up off the bowl and resetting them. From here, we're again going to do the exact same process as before, and we're just going to make things a little bit more challenging, increase the duration, and put multiple spoonfuls in our mouth. Again, we're not going to be jumping to anything too, too complicated. We're doing one spoonful, then maybe we're doing one and then picking up a spoonful but not eating it, and then maybe we're doing two spoonfuls, then three. You're slowly making this more and more difficult, asking them to wait a little bit longer each time. Remember, if your bird is struggling and they are constantly flying down, that means that this is too challenging for them and you need to make it simpler. Whether that means you back up to the full other steps or you just make this process a little bit easier for them by just picking up the spoon, picking it up a little bit further, actually picking up food, and moving from there is totally dependent on your bird. Experiment with different things, see what is less tempting for them, and start from there if you find that your bird is really, really struggling to withhold their own impulse control. So now that we've hit a pretty good point here where I can put a bunch of spoonfuls in my mouth and the birds are keeping both their feet on the floor, they're not flying down, they may still be presenting begging behavior and that's totally fine for me personally. I'm just wanting the birds to keep their feet on the perch. I don't care if they're going to stretch for me, I don't care if they're gonna present other behaviors in an attempt to earn what I have. For me, that's not what I really care about. What I care is that there isn't a bird hanging off of my face trying to steal crumbs as I'm putting food in my mouth. So all I'm asking for them is that the feet stay on the perch. That is the only behavior that I am personally reinforcing. You could make this more challenging if you wanted to and reinforce when they look away from the bowl, reinforce when they walk away from it. So that way they're learning to not engage with your food at all. If that's what you wanted, you could absolutely do that. But for this particular tutorial, I am only reinforcing them staying with both their feet on this perch. But once we've got that down and it's really solid, we're going to introduce what is called variable reinforcement. Variable reinforcement basically just means random reinforcement. So I might be giving them a treat after one spoonful, I might give them a treat after five spoonfuls, I might give them a treat after half a spoonful. They don't know. It's very important that you only start this after the bird completely understands the concept, when they're not constantly failing, when they're not flying down to the bowl, when they have a very clear understanding of what you want, that's when you can start to switch to variable reinforcement. The reason why we're switching to this sort of reinforcement is because it creates long-lasting duration. So if they have no idea when that treat is going to be coming, and it could come after one spoonful, it could come after 12, it actually makes animals more likely to have very long durations for behaviors. And this is very, very important because obviously we don't know how long it's going to take us to eat a meal and we don't want to be sitting with a bag of sunflower seeds beside us while we're eating every single time that we have people over. So using this type of reinforcement is going to make it easy for us to create a long-lasting effect where the birds are going to start to try 
to stay on this perch longer and longer and longer without very much effort at all. Because the reinforcement is completely randomized, the birds are going to try harder and harder and harder to make that treat show up by staying on that perch extremely solidly because they have no idea when it's going to be coming. Utilizing this type of reinforcement isn't super super challenging, but if your bird doesn't fully understand the behavior yet, they will fall back pretty hard. So it is very important that they understand exactly what you want from them, otherwise it's not going to work the way you want it to. So just make sure that they really have a solid understanding of the behavior, and then you can start doing one spoonful, give them a treat, six spoonfuls, give them a treat, two spoonfuls, give them a treat. Make it as random as possible. Make sure that you aren't waiting the exact amount of time. You want this to be extremely random in order to create that long lasting duration where they're going to sit on that perch and wait until you give them a treat because they're not going to know when it's going to show up or what's going to show up. They just know that all they have to do is stay on this perch and it will eventually arrive. And that's pretty much it. This trick will take a while for you to create very long lasting behaviors, especially when it comes to introducing new foods. If you're doing a crinkly bag of chips versus a plate versus a bowl versus a muffin, there's all sorts of different things you will have to reinforce this to. Right now I'm just using a bowl because it's nice and simple, but this behavior may not be generalized to other things. So do make sure to repeat this process with a bunch of different objects until your birds properly generalize it between a bunch of different types of food. And that does it. So as I've said, this behavior does require quite a bit of consistency. Being able to get really long durations and having the birds really understand is going to take time. So it is probably going to take a couple days or weeks before your birds really start to understand that this is kind of a house rule as opposed to just a once upon a time sort of behavior. It will take a little bit of time for them to fully understand that this has to happen every single time that food is around. As long as you are consistent with your rules and you make sure that you are asking for the same behaviors every single time, it's going to make it a lot easier for your bird to understand and you're going to find success a lot quicker. But that's going to do it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time. Bye! showing you how you can teach your bird to leave your plate alone while you're eating.